Spain has some of the best players, some of the best clubs and arguably the best league in the world. Spain are always in conversations about being potential winners and this time in Qatar, Spain is one of the top five favourites to win their second World Cup. To talk about his beloved Spain, we're joined by 3 Triple Z broadcaster Miguel Hill. Miguel, welcome to the program. Hi Gabriel, thank you so much. Well, Spain, uh, let's start it off. Um, just made it against Costa Rica, 7-0. It was a bit of a fluke. I mean, you can acknowledge that. But no, 7-0 against Costa Rica. I mean, what a fantastic start. That's what we expected. You know, oh, the <laughs> of course. No, 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 of course not. We're filming this? <laughs> no, so yeah, there, it was a surprise. We didn't expect to perform that good during the first match of the World Cup. You know, Costa Rica, during this World Cup, you can see like some countries like Saudi Arabia, for example, with Argentina or... Uh, Japan <laughs> with Germany. Yeah, Japan against Germany. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so of course we were not expecting that result, but it went all right. Everything worked. So yeah, with some controversial decisions, you know, from our coach, yeah. like we all know from the even before the starting of this World Cup, there were some decisions on who he picked for his team because it's his team. It's Luis Enrique's team, you know. And yeah, but everything is working for him as it was during the qualifying, during the last Euro Cup and during the last Nations League. He's been having some really good results with his team and they are still performing well. Let's see what happens on Monday morning against Germany, Bern. Yeah. <laughs> what do you think? Well, um, I'm, I'm actually wondering how much respect Spain still has um, <laughs> but, um, after, after our performance. but. Honestly, I'm, I'm not very hopeful. I mean, with, with, with all respect, uh, we, we have the quality, but after this first game, I don't know. Yes, we can turn it around. We probably can have a good fight against Spain, but I don't see at the moment you guys have the momentum with you and uh, the way you performed. Also, as you said, um, very impressive how Luis Enrique built his team. And I think there were a lot of controversial discussions in Spain around the team. But now he kept calm and, and built his team and at least the first match uh, proved him right. Whereas for us, it was the complete opposite. So we are under massive pressure. And of course, there's still a lot of discussion. The last match, we, we lost 6-0. That was one of the last game. I think it was the last game of Joachim Löw. We lost, six. okay, that's a few years ago, but we didn't perform well against Spain. The, the last, I think out of the last six matches, the only one we won was after our World Cup win uh, in 2014 and you guys just had um, um, been knocked out in the first group stage. So yeah, maybe we might have a draw if we are lucky, but with all respect, yeah. the quality is... Otherwise going to be a, a mini-final, Spain versus Germany. But um, yeah, like when Spain won the World Cup for the first time, because Spain... S for the first time and the only time. Yeah, well, well yeah. so far we, we don't know. But um, when, like, because we had Margaret, who was a, a French fan, and, and France and Spain, they're sort of similar in that they were, for many, many years, they were like so close to winning, so, so close all the time. And then they finally won, and then things just went uh, onwards and upwards. Like, when Spain won, there was a, a sense of relief. It's like, oh, finally, or, oh, yeah, we knew it was going to happen, but we just didn't know when. That sort of. At the moment, I think we are still building again a new team. As you can see, there are many young players, like for example, the midfielders. Right now, Barcelona midfielders, Pedri, Gabi, and Busquets, of course not. Busquets is almost retiring. It's actually his last season playing for Barcelona. But Gabi is 18 year old and he's performing really good. He's playing every single match in Barcelona. We also have a fullback from Barcelona, Balde, which was picked after the Gaia from Valencia was injured, but he wasn't picked on the first round of 26 players. Actually, uh, he's playing, Jordi Alba is his substitute, but Jordi Alba was picked before him. Okay. That's one of these decisions from <laughs> Luis Enrique. But anyway, we got Balde now on the team. And yeah, there are many players, 20 of them haven't played a single match of a World Cup a final stage. So you can see that we are still building, maybe in, during this World Cup, we can do something, but we are all looking for the next one in four years where they, when they will have more experience, you know, in the, all these kind of tournaments and all these international matches, and it will be. Do you think Spain has the right team this year? Would you have changed anything major? And who's your favourite player in the team this year? Pedri, I think it's a top level. It's a, yeah, one of the best midfielders for me at the moment in the whole world. 
And yeah, there was some decisions. We have better strikers in Spain, like we have uh, Iago Aspas, for example. We got Borja Iglesias, we got Jose Lu. All of them are scoring more goals mm -hmm. than any of the other ones that got picked. But in the end, it's Luis Enrique's decision. We all have a coach inside, but we are not the coach <laughs> in the end, so we cannot do much with that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It is what it is, and it's working, because whatever he does, it always works. For example, for this first match, he picked Rodri, which is a defensive midfielder for Manchester City. And he uh, put him as a central defender, and it worked, mm. which is a different position, and normally he would have a struggle uh, doing that, in a uh, playing in a different position, but it worked. For example, he picks uh, Guillamon, which is a th central defender for Valencia, and he puts him as a defensive midfielder. So everything he does, it works for him. Morata is not scoring lots of goals in his team, but when he gets to the national team, he scores. So you never know. Where do you see Spain, um, if I compare it, you know, with all the other leading football nations in Europe? I mean, you guys, for five, six years, you almost dominated world soccer, right? Mm -hmm. You won the World Cup, you won two European Cups, mm -hmm. and then you went out first round 2014 in Brazil. But then still, you started rebuilding in a way that I see as quite consistent. For example, Italy, they missed twice the World Cup, mm -hmm. then they suddenly made it to the final again of the European Cup, right? But France, you never know, there is a little bit of, you know, Mbappé, very good player, versus Benzema, you have always, like with France, if they are playing well, they're playing well. Yeah. But within the team, there's always a bit of yeah, um, animosity. So, and, and I feel like with, with Spain, what's the perception of the Spanish national team? Is, um, do you think that there is a bit more, how to say, time to build the team? Because that's what I feel like there is, yeah, we trust Luis Enrique or? We do, some of us we do. The media normally doesn't. So there is, <laughs> yeah. yeah. And he doesn't like the media also, so there's like a, yeah. yeah. <laughs> love, and, love and hate relationship in between them. But yeah, uh, we've been rebuilding with him for the last four years. And actually, we had really good results here in the last Euro Cup. We lost against uh, Italy in the semi finals, yeah. but we deserved going into the final. We played a better match than them, but we lost in the penalties. Same in the Nations League. We get lost against France with uh, no offside from Mbappe. They actually changed the rule after that because it was <laughs> no one could understand that offside. So yeah, we, we could have even going to the final of the last Euro Cup and going to the Na uh, Nations League with good results. So, yeah, we started rebuilding during the last four years with Luis, en Luis Enrique. It's a still an ongoing project and it's going to have good results for sure. Looks very promising. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I think you're, you're right. I think that Spain, probably not now, probably not this World Cup, I mean, they'll, they'll do well, but I think the next World Cup, that's where they're going to really, really challenge and, and really probably probably make it and go all the way. But uh, just a little bit off the Spanish national team and, and to yourself, am I right in saying that you're a part of the Real Madrid supporters uh, group of uh, Melbourne? Yes. Yeah. 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 So, because there's a lot of Real Madrid supporters at, at 3 Triple Z and mm -hmm. uh, who, who aren't from Spanish or Latin American backgrounds and they probably might be interested in being a part of, of the Of course, so, yeah. Please join us. We have a fan club called the Melbourne White Sharks. The Melbourne White Sharks? Yeah. Why White Sharks? Why not? Did we, oh. we, are, we are in Australia. Okay. <laughs> we, oh, right. we <laughs> there is the, I think there are kangaroos in Sydney also, another one. But okay. here we are, the White Sharks. The White Sharks. Yeah. Okay, so how does somebody, like, do, they, do you have a Facebook page? Or yeah, we have a Facebook page and we normally uh, join all together to watch the matches. Actually, last year we have, during the Champions League, yeah. We had a really good matches, yeah, you remember? <laughs> <laughs> I bet a lot of sangria and uh, paella was yeah. uh, drunk and eaten that day. Yeah, no, it was eaten that day. But they even showed a classical on Fed Square, right? One, yeah. uh, one day in, on a Monday morning. Uh, were there many people out there? Or? There were, there were, yeah, like about 200 people. Oh, wow. Yeah, La Liga organized yeah. that. Yeah. And they had like free breakfast, free coffees for everyone. Oh, that's yeah. That's right, yeah. It was a good event yeah yeah and uh, uh your our friend uh, max he's a uh, part of that group and he's, he's part of the group he's yeah. now living in, in queensland he's uh, a meter maid now uh, mm -hmm. from what i've heard but um <laughs> because that's your friend max but uh spain they play germany that's a, a mini final that's why Dian's in the middle just to um <laughs> separate them two but they play monday morning at 6 a.m eastern australian eastern standard time uh what do you think 
Do you think it's going to be a draw? Do you think it's going to be a, a victory to Spain? Because, you know, Germany are Germany, so... We are struggling and under a lot of, <laughs> yeah, yeah, and under a lot of pressure. I was talking to Miguel. <laughs> but you looked at me. <laughs> yeah, unbelievable. Welcome to the Burn Milk Show. Um, no, nah, but like, what do you think? It's going to be different. It's not going to be the same as Costa Rica. You know, with Costa Rica, actually, we beat the record of 82% position during the match. 82, which is a lot. Also passes. It was 994, it was the record in a final stage of the World Cup. It's not going to be the same. We need to do some changes, I think. For example, I think we cannot play Rodri again as a central defender because their strikers are not the same from Costa Rica like yeah. to Germany, of course. So we have to do a few changes in there. Maybe Morata also for Asensio as a striker. We have to do something, but yeah, I think it's going to be... Yeah, well, even if you draw or, or lose i'm sure yeah. that uh, i'm sure spain will be just fine <laughs> and especially in the future but uh good luck to spain and thank you so much for uh joining the program and uh big hello to everyone at the uh, real madrid supporters uh group even though i'm a, a barca fan but it doesn't matter that's fine <laughs> but uh yeah thank you very much and good luck and uh we'll be back with more after the break but first here's some words of wisdom from brian yap hey football fans i know you want quality footballs at affordable prices and I also know that you want footballs made ethically right here in Australia. Then look no further than Winter Sports. They make quality footballs for all levels of players and clubs at affordable prices. Look at these amazing footballs. Buy in bulk and save money. When you think of quality, think of Winter. Go to www.wintersports.com.au or email info at wincher.com.au and win with Winsha. Well, some of the second round of matches have already begun last night. And later tonight, uh, in a few hours' time, we have Australia versus Tunisia at 9 p.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time. But before we look into the future, we have to delve a little bit into the past, shall we say. Uh, Dion, uh, the Socceroos, they're... Um, for want of a better term, performance <laughs> against France. Oh, you called that a performance? Last, well, oh. I don't know. What do Look, you call I, I'm the first to sit here and say I was very optimistic coming into yeah. the match against France, given their depth of injuries. But as Bernd pointed out rightly, their depth of talent in France stood up to the yeah. test. The concern we had was the age and I suppose the lack of, we'll call it blooding of the players yeah. at this standard of football for Australia to represent us. Look, they're Everyone is still living the dream and the love of the first goal being Australian in that match. Mm. And it was all downhill from there. It's, they, the whole game plan seemed to change from Australia after that first goal. Instead of still playing what I consider to be their more natural style, they became defensive. And against a team like France, I don't know what they were thinking. I, I don't know what the coach was doing. And it was just heartbreak city for me after that. But <laughs> it was heartbreak city for me after that. So. Um, uh, look, I'm highly disappointed in the coaching on the day and I um, can't really look to some of the playing base because they are so young and, as I said, unblooded, really. They, they don't have enough caps at this level. And, Gabe, you pointed out last week, the prior games, we had how many people playing in major leagues around the world yeah. compared to now. Yeah. yeah. It's, it showed on the pitch. Yeah, and, and having said that i mean you, you did raise a very good point that the blooding and the amount of caps that this current soccer is team has um i'm actually quite a big fan of nathaniel atkinson um back in the day when he was playing for melbourne city i would watch him constantly and i was always thoroughly impressed he was one of the better players during the uh, olympics uh, olympic campaign i hope i really really hope that it doesn't his his game uh, against Mbappe? Who come on? I mean, it's Mbappe. He's one of the best players in the world. That it doesn't destroy him. That it it, it makes him a better player. I don't want to see you know young players with good potential to sort of you know be like, geez, I had that one bad game and just completely evaporate. I hope he he can I think as, get better. I think Australians take that sort of thing as character defining, and we always punch above our weight in a lot of different sports. Not soccer yet. We'll get there yeah. one day. But I think that we take that as character defining and we won't... It's not soul destroying. It's it's a challenge to step up. I don't yeah. think it will destroy his career. I hope it As you said, it was Mbappe. I think, uh, to my knowledge, he's out tonight anyway against Tunisia. He's, um, he's injured. 
but uh, coming back to the game, what I was surprised was when I read a few of the comments or, or listened to what Graham Arnold said, said in terms of there is a reason why they are the world champions. I mean, to a certain degree, I agree, but there is also like, um, yeah, you lost, you know, and in the second half, you didn't have a chance and there was no real change in the game plan in the second half, you know, you're one, two down. Mm. So at least show me something that there is the will to at least give it a try. But the second half was not at all. And I disagree also when he said the, the first 45 minutes, I think it was the first maybe 20 or 30 minutes where, where Australia played quite well. But in the overall picture, then it's like, um, yeah, what do we expect from Australia at this World Cup, yeah. right? And um, now against Tunisia tonight, that's probably the biggest chance to get a point out of this tournament. I sound negative here, but that's my yeah, honest but, opinion. But it, it is an honest opinion, yeah. and, and uh, we might sound negative, but th these are facts. This is the reality. And it was just so bad. I, I could not believe it, because we all, you know, it is France, the reigning world champion, some of the best players in world football. We know we get that. We're not disputing that. But it just seemed like Australia seemed to be, I don't know, like a deer caught in the headlights. Yeah. They just seemed to be completely, completely out of depth. They were completely outcoached. Um, I, I just don't understand the necessity to play from the back every single time. You know Mbappe is incredibly fast. You know Dembele is incredibly fast. You know Griezmann's incredibly fast. They have all these amazing forwards who are extremely quick and extremely dangerous. So why are you playing it at the back? That's how they scored two of their goals. It's just common sense. And we have the ball, we're losing, we have the ball, and so instead of going forward, we just turn around and play it to the back, and play it to the back. And then, then Matthew Ryan has a touch, and then he gives it to you know, someone in the crowd because we keep playing it in the back. It's A-League tactics. This is not the A-League, this is the World Cup. We're playing against France. I did make the comment last week, it seemed like a New South Wales Australian side. Uh, or a Sydney or FC a, yeah. and Central Coast slash Central Coast Mariners. But there's a lot of people, a lot of ex-Socceroos um, that have been extremely upset with the selections and, and so forth leading up to the World Cup. And, and they do have a good point. I mean, I, I, when I first saw the squad list, it's like, like A, Langerak, Rogic, uh, even Kenneth Dougal, who plays for Blackpool, Callum Elder, who plays for Hull, they, they, they moved heaven and he like they moved heaven and earth to get him away from the Irish national team set up to play for the Socceroos. He plays one game and then you can't like he's just disappeared. Like they haven't called him up since. Th these are players that are solid that play uh, week in week out for the clubs. Well, Rogic has been a little bit you know up and down, but he's someone with good experience. It would have been good when I first saw that Socceroo squad. I thought this is a, a squad for a, a World Cup qualifier against Chinese Taipei or, or something With all respect like to the I mean, But you know what I mean? Yeah. So many young players, so many players with hardly any caps. You know, with, with another coach, maybe it could work. But with Graham Arnold... I th but again, I, I wouldn't put the finger just towards him because I think um, that the, the, the whole structure or the, the, the story is a longer one. And for me, it started with the win of the, of the Asia Cup um, mm. on home ground. So yes, then we had uh, the qualifier for the World Cup 2018. But latest then, when Ainge Postecoglou left, yeah. I can't see a decent improvement over the last four years, right? Yeah. And if you, if you look at how Australia qualified to their tournament, yes, we are happy. We won against Peru in the in the um, penalty shootout, but the way how Australia was struggling, yes, we had COVID, you know, yeah. but so were other countries as well, and we were really struggling in that group. As I said before, now I see Saudi Arabia a little bit different, but it was not in a way that I expected Australia to qualify. Yeah. So, um, and we are coming back to the beginning, um, the story that we have for years now, the structure within Australian football, and this at least this match showed us where Australia stands in, in the world, world football level. Yeah. Okay. So, that's, um, and um, yeah, and, and for tonight against uh, Tunisia, I mean, they had a, a decent nil-nil against Denmark, which are a top side. I was surprised. Yeah. Denmark, for me, was the, was the favorite. Um, also, again, what an amazing story, Christian Eriksen being back now playing with a 
with a pacemaker. Yeah. I mean, that's one of these wonderful stories, apart from the bad story that Qatar also produces. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, of course, fingers crossed that tonight maybe we will have a boost um, against Tunisia, but... Yeah, we'll see. But I, I, I my, just thinking about what happened, I, I remember seeing Graham Arnold do a podcast with Mark uh, Burris, um, where he mentioned about how, oh, the soccer is they're playing against France, so oh, you should be nervous, blah, blah, blah. He goes, no, no, we're fine, because France don't really know anything about us. And I'm thinking, do you honestly think that the French national coaching unit aren't going to be doing any homework whatsoever against any of the opposition they're playing against. They would have seen tapes and DVDs and all sorts of analytical data against all their opposition. So uh, I was just like astounded by this and this sort of, oh, you know, we're gonna, you know, we've played in Qatar before, we, we'll do well. Yes, a lot of teams play in heat. They, they're, they're, you know, they're, Australia's not the only one. Without sounding rude or disrespectful to the Australian players, it's like we've got man babies playing against men. And I don't mean that to be derogatory, I just no. mean the age of some of these players and again, the lack of caps and the blooding of them. It shows against a, a fully fledged group of excellent men in the French team. Yeah. I don't know what Arnold's thinking. And, and like we said, we, we mentioned it last week, that lack of players yeah. playing in some of the top leagues and the top clubs in the world. I mean, even we have one representative that plays in Germany, but it's in the second division. Yeah. The two top, the two goal scorers for the Japanese team against Germany. They yeah, play in the Bundesliga. Yeah. Yeah. Look at Japan, look at Saudi Arabia, look at how many of the South Korea. They're you just show improving. me, maybe with We're the exception not. of, I don't know about the Qatarian players, but you show me another country that's rocked up to this World Cup and does not have their team full of people in international, whether they're Bundesliga, Premier League, La Liga, you know, Serie A, they're playing internationally on the stage and they're getting themselves massive amounts of experience. Is there any other team in this World Cup that has taken in people with such little international experience? And I mean regular playing experience in those leagues. I'm just wondering because there is also discussion, you know, that the level of the A-League was getting better and better um, over the last years, which I think is true. Yeah. But could that also be to the disadvantage that now players feel more comfortable to stay in Australia rather than yes. to, do the, to take the risk yeah. and to take the big step and go overseas? And, and get their um, foot into the door and start playing with decent European clubs because yeah. I think we discussed it last week that depth is really missing. It is. Yeah, so exactly right. I mean, we we can discuss this all day, <laughs> and, and and I'm sure we will once the cameras stop rolling. We'll we'll continue, but uh, just very quickly, we won't go through all the games, but just some of the games that are sort of like mini finals, like some of the matches that are really really important in the makeup of what's going to happen in the following rounds. Uh, we have France versus Denmark, Sunday, 3 a.m. Argentina versus Mexico, 6 a.m. on Sunday. Group E, we've mentioned this before, Spain versus Germany, Monday, 6 a.m. Group G, even though Brazil are pretty comfortable, but there's a lot of Brazilian fans out there. Brazil versus Switzerland, Tuesday, 3 a.m. And Group H, Portugal versus Uruguay, Tuesday, 6 a.m. They're all Australian Eastern Standard Time, so they're all very, very important games. And of course, in a few hours time, Tunisia versus Australia. We wish Australia all the very best they need. What's your tip? <laughs> I hope Australia win. I don't care the score, just please win. That's all I ask. I'm sorry, after Tunisia drew with another fairly quality mm. side, um, I don't even think it's a draw. I think we're losing again. I'm sorry to say it, and I love yeah. my country. And I love my team. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Burned? I well, that's all we have to... No. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, can't, I can't tell you why. I, I have a one-all feeling, but... Um, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, that's fine. But thank you very much, Bern. Good luck to Germany. Thank you very much to you. Good you. luck to the Socceroos. Thank you very much for watching. I hope to see you next week. Same time, same place. Enjoy the football. Bye for now.